Hello, thank you for coming to this recorded session of our e-learning presentation on mechanical and venturi steam traps. Typically, when you'd come here, you'd hear the live as recorded version, uh, which was actually done yesterday, but we did have a hiccup in the audio. So we are doing this a little bit differently. I will be going through the opening presentation, and then whenever we have a chance, I am going to get it back to the recorded session from yesterday. So forgive us for this hiccup. Today joining us, we have a bunch of industries represented from OEMs, chemical, pharma plants, food, beverage, manufacturing, uh, from certainly many different regions of the country. Brian Anderson, who will be presenting, is actually presenting from Cape Town, Africa, which is where Delta Steam Systems is headquartered. So as far as Peerless goes, we started in 1914 as a general mill supply company with an emphasis on our catalog. Every year we put out a catalog and we sold more wheelbarrows and shovels uh, than any, anything else. Uh, certainly we've evolved with the times and we now do have our ISO certification and we become to be known as a reliable, trusted source for process components. We operate in three main divisions. We have our Peerless Process Group, which is more of an MRO type of supply. This would be our legacy piece of business. We have our Procore division, which was formed about 10 years ago to really work with our OEMs and equipment builders to help them take on the unique challenging projects. We have our high temp fabrication division. There we work with scientific surfaces, refractory, and we do have vertical mills and CNC machines where we are machining to print. So Brian Anderson, again, is from Cape Town, South Africa. He's the president and owner of Delta Steam Systems. From the Peerless side, we have Dan Morgan, Greg Barrow, and there's me, Kevin Renaud. Uh, I asked Brian a little bit about himself, and he did mention that he was the 2015 Entrepreneur of the Award of the Year recipient uh, in Cape Town, South Africa. So with that, I'm gonna get into the beginning portion of Brian's presentation. So Delta Seam Systems is located in Cape Town. They were established in 1999, have 21 years of experience in the industry. Uh, they are ISO certified and they do have a 20-year guarantee on their Venturi steam trap. So the function of a steam trap is to vent air, non-condensable gases, to release condensate that forms continuously, to prevent escape of steam, uh, and they are designed to operate reliably, or they should be designed to operate reliably for long periods in very harsh environments. Primarily, they're used in distribution lines, steam process lines, and in tracers. So we're gonna go over the mechanical types of steam traps, uh, really focusing on the potential modes for failure. So we're gonna start with a free float ball type. Uh, and again, you can see in the image right here, the float is affected directly by the level of condensate in the trap. This float will freely respond um, it, by opening and closing the valve, uh, and it'll rise away from the orifice, allowing condensate to be drained freely. Potential failure modes. This float can be damaged by water hammer, uh, it also can be impacted by corrosion, causing bad seal. Uh, if the valve orifice is oversized, steam leakage will occur, and the internal thermostatic air vent can fail in the open position. Uh, very similar to that is the fixed ball float. Again, very similar to the previous uh, style, but this one has a lar uh, actual lever that will act as the ball moves to open and close the valve. Very similar failure modes. Uh, with the addition of some additional moving parts that can also cause failure. The inverted bucket trap. This one, there's a bucket inverted within the trap uh, and it opens and closes the lever and the valve as this bucket rises and falls um, with the steam. Potential failure modes. It does have a fixed lever attached to the bucket which may corrode and break away. Uh, again, if the valve orifice is oversized, it will leak. Uh, and it can be easily damaged by water hammer causing it to fail. Uh, thermostatic, or I'm sorry, th thermodynamic or TD type. They feature an intermittent cycle operating characteristic. Uh, this disc in the seat constantly open and close. Uh, the opening closing action of the thermodynamic disc traps is caused by the difference in the forces acting on the bottom and top sides of the valve disc. Uh, and the forces are essentially based on variations in the kinetic uh, and pressure energy of the fluids, air, condensate, and steam. This one, based on the constant cycling of the disc on the seat, uh, it can corrode, it can scale, and it can uh, scratch the seat, causing some leakage. And here is what a leaking TD trap might look like. 
So finally, the last mechanical type we're going to talk about is the thermostatic or the bimetallic. Uh, and this one operates uh, in response to the so surrounding steam temperature. Uh, there's an element here that will expand and contract based on the steam. Uh, and as it expands and contracts, it lifts and it opens and closes the trap itself. Failure modes, uh, the continuous expansion and contraction of the elements can result in fatigue. Uh, and again, scale or other solid particles can damage the valve seat or disc. So the effects of the moving parts in the opening and closing. Every time uh, condensate is present, it will open. Uh, when steam is present, it will close. This continuous cycle uh, is, is designed to keep the steam from escaping. Uh, and imagine all these cycling five times a day, or five, I'm sorry, five times a minute is 300 times per hour, 7,200 times per day, and two and a half million times a year. Uh, and again, that's a lot of moving parts that can cause failure. Uh, one of the last points here is, is important. Conventional steam traps are viewed as a consumable with some styles needing routine maintenance on, or regular replacement. So they generally fail in two ways, fail closed and fail open. Uh, fail closed you re results in water hammer, poor heat transfer, carbonic corrosion, uh, and cracked or damaged heat exchangers. In the failed open, you have steam loss, boiler demand increase, water hammer, uh, more fuel used, uh, and pressuriz pressurization and slowdown of the condensate return system. Of course, both me methods are problematic. Why is there so much steam trap failure? There could be some lack in understanding of the forces involved in a trap. Uh, traps are sometimes just simply overlooked. They may be in obscure or inaccessible uh, positions. Uh, effective and correct steam trap testing methods are not always used and a failure to grasp value of efficient steam trap system. So there are five major areas. I believe this might be the last slide that I have before we turn over Brian. Um, there may be five areas that we look at where the failure is, is really problematic. It's process problems. It's frequent downtime, pressure surges, and slow startup, distribution problems, steam loss, water hammer, poor steam quality, maintenance problems, fewer people doing more work, no spares, increased valve and gasket failure, financial losses, high energy cost, high cost of spare parts, and finally, the environmental impact, um, high CO2 emissions. There are some studies that do say on average 20% of steam traps in any plant um, are leaking or in need of repair. So steam trap leaks are among the most wasteful, therefore expensive issues found in a plant. Leaking steam traps can increase operating expenses by as much as 30%. Uh, and of course, one steam leak can cost up to $8,000 per year. So this is where I'm gonna turn it over to Brian and he is going to talk about the Venturi style. Um, naturally, uh, where there's an emphasis on the no moving parts. Uh, you may have caught that from where we're going here. So I thank you for your, your time. I appreciate your understanding of the, um, the different nature of this presentation. And again, thank you for joining. All right, now we're gonna talk about Venturi steam traps. It's a relatively new technology. A Venturi orifice steam trap continuously removes condensate from a steam system. The operation of the trap is based on difference in density between water and steam. When both media are present, the much denser condensate will be preferentially just discharged and stop the steam from passing through the orifice. The size of the orifice of each trap should be determined by the specific pressure and condensate flow through the trap. As condensate is forced through the orifice of the Venturi steam trap, it passes from an area of high pressure into a low pressure region in the throat of the Venturi, which creates flash steam. This creates a localized back pressure on the orifice, which contains the steam in the process. The throat contains a number of different stages of varying diameter. At lower flow rates, the condensate flashes close to the orifice in a smaller diameter stage, whereas at higher load conditions, it flashes further down the throat in a larger stage. The flash point moves up and down the throat under variable loads. As the load changes, so does the, the flashing point occur. Are Venturi steam traps the same as fixed orifice steam traps? That's a picture on the left of a Venturi steam trap, of a, a orifice, simple orifice plate top steam trap. And then the right is the internals of a Venturi top steam trap. The main features of a Venturi steam trap is the Venturi design after the tunnel orifice on the trap. Condensate flashes into steam in the mouth of the Venturi. This high pressure flash steam acts like a plug to the lesser dense steam and allows the denser condensate through. 
as the upstream load conditions change, so does the point of flash steam change. The point of flashing moves closer to the mouth of the venturi and further away as the upstream conditions change, allowing the venturi steam truck to be able to regulate the condensate load without backing up of condensate or leaking steam. This flash area is like a plug that moves in and out continuously as the upstream load changes, thereby allowing the venturi steam truck to handle varying loads. Hey, Brian. Uh, fix yes. Sorry, just uh, we have a quick question here. I wanted to want to interject if now is a good time. Um, so you mentioned uh, in an earlier slide about the sizing, and it seems like that uh, orifice is um, is particular. So what uh, what are some of the types of things that could happen if the trap is sized, if that orifice is sized incorrectly? All right, there's one of two ways it can be sized incorrectly. Either it can be sized too small, that would result in backing up of condensate, which is obviously creates a problem in process applications. The upstream of the trap would be cold. Or if it's oversized, then it would leak steam. So the, the sizing of the orifice is it's got it's got a, a range that it works in, but the sizing is important not to get a get get it oversized or undersized. Undersized is it'll be cold, oversized it'll leak a bit of steam. So that's the main area. So, okay. okay. Um, yeah, there's actually a, a bit of a follow-up to that. Kind of ties into that answer. Um, hmm. So if if you find that a uh, like if there's a potential for a, a trap to be sizing sized incorrectly or not working properly, how how do you know or how are you aware that a trap isn't isn't functioning properly in this maturity sure. style? All right. So the if it's if it's undersized, the trap will be cold itself. So if, if you take a temperature reading of the trap, you'll see that it's cold uh, and, and therefore you'd need to change the insert orifice to a bigger size. If it's leaking steam, the way that it can be tested again with a thermal or temperature gun or with an ultrasonic steam trap tester and the reading would be picked up that it's passing steam and uh, with the orifice would need, the venturi orifice inside would need to be changed to a smaller orifice if it was leaking steam. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I will. Uh, I'll chime in again if there's any follow-up to that. But thanks. All right. So a fixed orifice trap doesn't have a venturi off the orifice, and therefore cannot use the flash steam as a movable plug to handle varying loads. A fixed orifice steam trap can only be used on fixed condensate loads, which you don't find really in a steam trapping environment. Most loads are varying loads, so there's not much place for a fixed orifice steam trap to be used. A fixed orifice steam trap is prone to wire draw, which results in the widening of the orifice, causing the fixed orifice to leak steam. This wire draw does not occur in the venturi steam trap because it's got a long tunnel orifice. You'll see the the in this picture, you could probably just make out that it's got a long tunnel orifice there before it enters creates a venturi outlet. Okay. Just some of the sizing information we'd need to size a venturi steam trap. If it's on a process application like a shell and tube heat exchanger, we'd need certain information like the steam, si steam line size, modulating control valve, whether it has a control valve, yes or no, the steam pressure, um, is it superheated or not superheated, steam line size after the control valve, the, rate, the heat rating of the, of the heat exchanger, the product information, product in temperature, product out temperature, and also what the back pressure, condensate pressure is for the steam trap. So that's in a nutshell what sizing information you'd need for a shell and tube heat exchanger. For a midline drip, for a drip leg process application, so on one of your steam lines, again, we need to know if the steam line's insulated, yes or no, the steam line diameter, steam pressure, the distance from the previous trap, the actual meet the length in feet of how many feet the steam trap is trapping and then lastly we need to know the condensate line return pressure so it's a, probably a bit more information than when sizing a conventional mechanical steam trap but once the steam trap sized and uh, installed you don't need to size it again it's guaranteed for the next 20 years so the sizing will take a bit more time than usual but once it's in it's in for good Brian, okay, we do have a question, and it kind of it, it may relate to this. Uh, so the question came in: uh, Is the orifice uh, replaceable? So uh, I would guess the question is maybe being asked in terms of if there's a, a design condition or a system change uh, that would require a different orifice size, or 
um, something that might require it. Is there is there a way to change the orifice? Yes. So if you can see from this picture, you'll see that the there's the orifice insert that gets installed in the trap. It's a simple matter of just uh, isolating the upstream and downstream of the trap, opening the top cap here, unscrewing the in, in, inserted orifice. So this venturi orifice is screwed in. You just unscrew it, fit the new one, and close the top cap again, and then you're off, off to go, and you can go ahead and carry on. So yes, it, it is tr interchangeable. Perfect, thank that, you. Okay. Yep, I'll let you know if there's any uh yeah, if there's any follow-up. All right, thank you. Okay, then the main difference between mechanical steam traps and venturi steam traps. Mechanical steam traps have moving parts which which can fail over time. Uh venturi have no moving parts that can fail. Mechanical steam traps require spare parts from time to time. Um we said no the venturi steam trap is no spare parts required. It's got nothing moving, so there's no spare parts that would need to be replaced. Mechanical steam traps have got poor resistance to wear and water hammer, whereas Venturi steam traps handle wear and water hammer very well. When there's water hammer in the plant, there's nothing in the Venturi steam trap that can get damaged. Mechanical steam trap is a one-year guarantee. Venturi steam trap is 20-year guarantee. Expected lifespan of one to three years estimated on a mechanical steam trap whereas on a Venturi steam trap is 20 to 30 years. And then a mechanical steam trap can fail open and waste steam, whereas a correctly sized Venturi steam trap cannot fail open and waste steam. Okay. We've got a video just showing how the Venturi steam trap works. We're going to play it for you, Dan. Yep, I'm on it. years. At startup, the water is at very low pressure and temperature, so no flashing occurs as it exits the venturi. This means there is no back pressure present to restrict the flow of cold condensate as it exits the delta trap. This cold water exits freely at two to three times faster than hot pressurized condensate can at running load. This absence of flash steam on startup is why Delta Venturi orifice steam traps are suitable for startup loads. Once all the cold condensate and non-condensable gases have been ejected, steam and hot condensate reach the Delta steam trap. As the steam continuously condenses to hot condensate in the pressurized steam system, it is fed to the steam trap by the pressure in the system. This hot condensate passes through the orifice and enters the mouth of the Venturi. As the condensate passes through the mouth of the venturi, there is a sudden pressure drop, which causes a percentage of the hot condensate to change phase from condensate to steam, a phenomenon known as flashing. This flashing creates a back pressure zone in the mouth of the venturi. Because condensate is 1,000 times denser than steam, it is able to push through this back pressure zone while restricting the steam. As the pressure and load in the steam system vary, so too does the percentage of flash steam being created at the mouth of the venturi in the delta steam trap, which in turn allows the back pressure at the venturi to vary accordingly. This varying of back pressure at the mouth of the venturi allows the delta steam trap to self-regulate the condensate flow as the condensate load changes. As the pressure or load in the steam system rises or falls, the back pressure that is constantly changing at the mouth of the venturi also rises or falls. This action gives the delta venturi orifice steam trap the ability to easily manage discharging varying condensate loads in a steam trap that has no moving parts, while still keeping the steam in the system. In summary, Delta Venturi orifice steam traps are designed to outperform all conventional steam traps through their unique Venturi design with no moving parts at all. Once installed, the Delta Venturi orifice steam trap will outlast and outperform any other mechanical steam trap in the same application. All right, it's a great visual there. Uh, I'm gonna hand this back over to you now, Brian. All right, so the components of a Venturi steam trap, as we spoke about earlier, it's got a Venturi insert, which you can see over here, 
This is just showing a flanged version, which comes in screwed version, flanged, and socket weld. It's got two strainers. It's got a primary strainer at the bottom and a secondary strainer at the top, protecting the venturi orifice from any potential plugging or blocking. Um, and uh, it's got a, a bottom cap where you can fit a blowdown valve on if you'd like to have online blowing down from time to time. Uh, the top cap is removable, as I said, with gasket. It's removable to be able to get to access to the venturi at any time. All right. So cost savings using venturi technology. It's no more stock holding of steam traps and spare parts. No more labor required to repair or maintain steam traps. Less water treatment chemicals lost. Um, less boiler makeup water lost. That's lost. It's a saving of boiler makeup water and water treatment chemicals because leaking steam traps waste steam and chemicals to atmosphere. And it's got a faster and more efficient production due to improved heat transfer. And that's our summary. All right. Uh, we do have a couple of questions in the queue right now. Um, I'll get to those in one Good. sec. I'm going to turn this over to Kevin. Um, presentation. But uh, as I do that, I'll ask uh, the first question we have here. So uh, most of the, the images we saw, uh, the traps were uh, shown in the horizontal position. Um, is it possible for these Venturi style traps to be installed in a vertical orientation with steam entering essentially through the bottom um, mm -hmm. and then exiting, uh, discharging through the top? Is that possible? Yes. So Venturi steam traps can be fitted in vertical or horizontal position. They work on a delta P. So they work with the differential pressure. So there's no problem. There's no ball or disc or float inside that that will be fall if it's on its wrong way around. You can fit them upside down if you like. Uh, any way that, that you desire to fit them, they can be fitted. Perfect. Okay. Um, yep. And I'll remind everyone again. We'll you know we're still welcoming questions. So if there's anything else you you want to get asked, uh, please continue to send those in. Um, we've got one more here. Uh, can you comment on, um, so there's a, there's a concern here with uh, Venturi possibly getting uh, clogged. Um, can, you, can you provide any comments on like uh, how often that happens or what can be done uh, to prevent that or, or treat that? Sure. So the, 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 the Venturi orifice trap's got, first of all, it's got two strainers to prevent blocking. Uh, and then secondly, it's got a, on the actual entry to the vent, to the orifice, it's got an in a cone shape which deflects solid particles away from the mouth of the orifice. If for some reason it does get blocked on a dirty steam system, um, it's a matter of simply isolating the upstream and downstream valves, opening the top clap, and putting a nozzle cleaner through the venturi orifice. So just a simple nozzle cleaner that you get will just fit down the hole, the hole, the orifice of the venturi, cleaning it out. And once that's done, you can put the cap back on, open the isolating valves, and you're good to go. You won't need to change any parts or anything like that. It's just a simple matter of cleaning it once. OK, perfect. Uh, let's see. We got one more that uh, question that just came in. Um, so this is the seems like a, a very specific situation here that so we may have to follow up uh, outside of the webinar but I'll, I'll ask this and get your thoughts brian um so if a facility has 100 traps 20 are leaking um what, what would essentially be your your first steps towards uh, a remedy um orifice sizes uh, i guess will need to be adjusted um as all of them come online is that is that correct um so like, what, what you constant change in orifice size need to happen as more and more of these style steam traps right. come online? I understand. No, not at all. So you would you would size them for the application, but they would they would not need to be changed. If you would if you change just the twenty that have failed uh, initially, and then only change the the balance later, you wouldn't need to change the orifice. It would you would leave the orifice the same. Does that answer your question? Uh, I will. I'll check to make sure uh, that we uh, got that correct and answered it correctly, and um, possibly have to follow up outside. But uh, it sounds like uh, we may have covered it properly. So um, for now, that looks like uh, all the questions we have in the queue right now. So um, I think Kevin, maybe you have uh, some some closing words here. 
Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Brian. Really appreciate uh, your support today. And I, I guess I'd add that we, we've worked with some customers here that came to us with their most challenging application, uh, maybe a trap or two that uh, seemed to keep failing and see if the Delta might or the Venturi might uh, be a good solution for you. So we'd welcome any challenges that you might have. Um, again, the 20 year warranty, it, it's, it's funny, they originally had a 10 year warranty, but they've been around now long enough to know that they're not getting any back. Um, so they did uh, a few years back uh, move it up to a 20 year warranty. So um, that does seem to be uh, strange in this industry for sure. So um, thanks again. If there are no more questions, um, oh, once again, there is a certificate of completion. If you would like one, uh, just let us know. Uh, in fact, you can let us know in the form of the survey that will be following this. So uh, as far as what's up next, it will be announced shortly what will be the uh, next version of our e-learning. So um, if there are no other questions that came in, uh, I would wish everybody a great uh, day, great rest of the week, and continue to stay safe and healthy. Take care. Thanks again, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Take care.